what is up everyone welcome back to my youtube channel today we will be reacting to the final part to the indycar split series i've loved getting through this um didn't know there was such a big drama about this um in indycar i'd heard the split being mentioned in like a couple previous videos before reacting to this series but i had no idea what they were on about i was like what the what the hell is going on but this series has given me a real insight to IndyCar and I have been loving every single episode so I'm excited to get into the final part today but before we do that make sure you subscribe over half of you that watch my videos still not subscribed just hit the bell it takes two seconds and if you'd like to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks you can also do that by hitting the join button down below. In 1998, they installed a device called the Peds Barrier to their inside walls. <gasps> oh! A part in a crash. Looking for a better system, George approached the University of Nebraska about developing something different. He funded the early engineering that created the Safer Barrier, and Indianapolis was the first track to install it in wow. 2002. So crazy to think, like, how far we've come in safety measures for each motorsport. In July 1995, an ESPN poll showed that 30% of American auto racing fans said NASCAR was their favorite form of the sport. In wow. contrast, 25% said IndyCar. I wonder if you did that poll now, what, it what the chart would look like if we asked people if they prefer NASCAR or IndyCar. Safety in IndyCar in the late 90s was a major issue as well. Two months after Scott Brayton's death at Indy, Jeff Krosnoff was killed in a cart race on the streets of Toronto. Oh no, I just got goosebumps. Cart continued on their direction of supercars with big engines and massive speed. Wow, well, look at that. In three fans were killed at the US 500 when a wheel flew into the grandstand. In 1999, three what? fans were killed in an IRL race in Charlotte by flying wheels. In the fall of 1999, Cart lost no way. drivers and crashes. Rookie Gonzalo Rodriguez and superstar. It just keeps Moore. going. <laughs> That's so sad. It was even revealed in 2020 that Cart made an offer to buy Formula One. What? No way. Some team owners thought Craig was aloof and alienated companies that did business with Cart through a lack of communication and planning. <laughs> Can't we all just get along? No. <laughs> that is my favorite bit. Out of the whole series. <laughs> Between June of 2000 and December 2001, Cart had four different presidents. C wow, they really went through it, didn't they? At the end of the year, Penske left Cart for good. A man who helped create the series and became its de facto leader abandoned what he started. <laughs> oh, that's not a good sign, is it? In 2002, the Cart IRL fight reignited with strong fury at the Indy 500. Elio mm, of course it did. Leading the race with two laps to go and needed to save fuel. A fast-charging Paul Tracy caught Castroneves in turn three and passed him for the lead. At the wow. exact same moment, <gasps> turn two brought out the caution flag. Well, that is the race right there. Yeah, he ran yeah. just a spurt of fuel and Paul Tracy's gonna- Cool. Wow. What a finish. At the moment of caution and Tracy finished second. The controversy cool. was related to how drivers were told of the caution. All cars had a light in the cockpit that turned yellow at the moment of caution. People who supported Castroneves said he was leading when the moment this light on the dashboard came on. People in support of Tracy pointed to video evidence that showed Tracy was leading when the caution lights were turned on. Oh, that's controversial. Guys. But there is a caution light there that has just switched on. You see it go from dark to a yellow shade. So at this point, the caution light is on. If you move the image back to the left, you make the call. It's your judgment as to where those two cars are. Mm. There may have been an actual time difference between when the light on the dashboard came on and the lights on the fence. When was the exact moment of caution? When there were two different ways to relay the message to drivers. Paul Tracy was a kart driver racing for a kart team, whereas Castroneves was an IRL driver in an IRL team. Oh. Tony George. The process was expected to be highly political. They That's why he got it. I figured it out, guys. Look at this. Oh, look at them go. Yes, it did. Wow. At the line. Oh, holy. At the line. No. Look at the line. The line. no. The line. That's insane. I couldn't believe how close they were when I watched my first Indy 500. <laughs> like, you definitely don't have that in F1. <laughs> That's not me putting down F1, because I absolutely live by F1. But it was exciting to watch. The IRL faced a new problem with rising danger. 
Originally designed as a safer series than cart, speeds in the IRL grew back to a mid-90s level. Dan Weldon, Elio oh, no. Castro and Evans, and even 63-year-old Mario Andretti all suffered airborne crashes by the summer of 2000. <gasps> oh no. Texas in October subjected him to a force of 200... Oh! The highest recorded amount a human has ever survived. And finally... That's insane. The disastrous Las Vegas season finale in 2011. Oh dear, what's going on? Prove IndyCar the best drivers in the world by offering a $5 million bonus for any driver from another series that could win the Las Vegas race. After oh. attracting big attention for the series, no driver took the challenge. We have the fastest, most versatile race car drivers in the world. And no one chose the, to make that decision to go forward with it. To salvage the promotion, unemployed Indy 500 winner Dan Weldon took the challenge. I just want to thank Randy for, for oh, the opportunity, but, but also thank Randy for what he's done for the IndyCar series to date. Race officials oh, allowed 34 cars to start the race, the largest 34. field since 1997. It quickly became it's apparent that the net. cars couldn't get away from each other. On lap 11, James Hinchcliffe and Wade Cunningham made contact and started a massive crash. Oh no. $5 million Here man, we go. Dan Weldon died in the accident. <gasps> he died. While pack racing had been done for years in the IRL, drivers feared ever returning to that style. I didn't Andy expect Bernard received death threats in the aftermath of Weldon's crash. By 2012, Bernard was the victim it's of another that way. rebellion from team owners. The new chassis for IndyCar was more expensive I'm in than shock. expected. TV ratings were dropping. A cancelled race in China. I didn't think another person was going to die. That's really sad. And he didn't even race in Indy. He just came over to do the vacant. Oh no, that's really upsetting. So my job was to come in and try to uh, stop the bleeding, which I did. I, I made it um, break even. In a <laughs> Love that. Which I did, by the way, guys. Firestone Tires performed well and never failed. The switch to another company was something team owners were uncomfortable with. No matter how much money was offered, that was the final straw, and Bernard was released. Tony George led the sale of both IndyCar and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to Roger Penske. 25 years after the split, IndyCar was a mixture of kart and IRL ideas. The 2021 schedule had even less oval tracks than kart did in the 90s, only three. Since the split began, there are 49 tracks that have been dropped from the IndyCar schedule. As the series looked for venues that attracted crowds, driver safety is far greater than it's ever been. Yeah. IndyCar is unified again, but the question remains, will the popularity ever return? Will it? That's a good question. Well, I feel like I learned a lot there. In not just that episode, but the whole series. The whole series, 10 out of 10. I... Like I said, I learned a lot. Um, definitely gave me a good insight into indie, especially as someone who doesn't watch indie, who's now started to do so. It's good for people that don't necessarily watch the series or are trying to get into it, as I am one of those people and the series has worked out really well for me. Um, like I said, I watched my first Indy 500 with some of you guys and it was, it was insane. I couldn't believe what I was watching. <laughs> Uh, I know that that's like their biggest race of the season, so of course I was watching it and I was like, wow, the, the, the stands were full, there were so many people there, which was crazy to me. But then when you watch them at other races, it's not so popular. So I wonder, like you said there, I wonder if Indy will ever get back to the popularity it was. If, you've, if you're someone that watches IndyCar and have been for a while, let me know in the comments if you think it will shoot back up in popularity. There's always new people joining the sport. <laughs> um so who knows but yeah i did enjoy that series i do love reacting to indycar videos at the moment um so with that being said if you have any other videos that you'd like me to react to drop them in the comments i'm working my way through everybody's suggestions at the moment if you did want to check out any of my other socials they are all linked down below and if you want to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks you can also do that by hitting the join button down below but i hope you enjoyed today's reaction and i will catch you next time for the next one bye